My name is Bruce. I've been working bar for almost 40 years now. In that time, I've learned a trick or two that I'd like to pass on to you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We've got a lot of ground to cover. We'll look at some of the forgotten classics and some unusual new tasty creations right for any occasion. Cheers. Hey, how are you doing? Just having a little spot of tea before the show. That's good tea. I used to work this bar called Smitty's Cove. We're talking pool tables, darts, shuffle boards, and barroom fights every night. It was quite the place. Not as bad as that movie Roadhouse, but pretty close. The bar had a nautical theme going on with fishnets strung up on the ceiling, and there were oars and paddles and porthole mirrors, and, and the bar itself was made to look like an old wooden ship. I guess I was its captain. I remember there was even a Nickelodeon in the corner. What's a Nickelodeon, you ask? Well, it's a player piano. I guess at one point it cost a nickel to turn it on. In my day, it was a quarter. <laughs> There's inflation for you. But I loved that old piano. You could either listen while watching the piano roll scroll by with the, the ivories bouncing up and down, or you could sit down and play it like a regular piano. That's what I did after hours most nights, just to unwind, even though that thing was so badly out of tune and, oh, it sounded horrible. <laughs> like I said, though, there was always a fight going on, and for whatever reason, all I knew was I needed some kind of protection. And that's where Bill comes in. He was a big, burly guy, but nothing more than really a, a gentle giant. He stood over six feet tall and must have weighed in at 275 pounds. Let me tell you, people took notice when he entered a room. Bill and I, well, we eventually became friends, and whenever there was a scuffle going on, all I had to do was say, Bill! That guy over there, get him. <laughs> yeah, I was always surprised how fast Bill could move. He'd get up off his chair and with one swift blow, knock the bloke down, the troublemaker, and, and then he'd just simply pick him up and throw him outside like yesterday's trash. I was always appreciative of Bill keeping order and would feed him free drinks just for helping me out. Funny thing though, Bill wasn't like most guys drinking their beers. Nope, nope, his drink, <laughs> His drink was a pink lady. No one ever questioned his beverage choice. They better not. So wherever you are today, Bill, thanks for watching my back. This cocktail's for you. The exact origin of the pink lady is not known for sure. During the Prohibition era, in the 1920s and into the 30s, the cocktail was already widely known and quite trendy and totally in vogue. The Pink Lady epitomizes the bad quality liquor that was going around during Prohibition because it was being primarily made in basements and back alleys. A big old bathtub of booze. <laughs> Who could ask for anything more? This might partially explain why there was a need to add additional flavors to compensate for the gin's bad taste. Well, keeping with the pink theme, I got my pink chalk and my pink tie, and hey, let's make this drink pink. Okay, first thing we need is some gin. Gin is a liquor obtained by distilling grain mash with juniper berries and other botanicals, such as anise, angelica root, cinnamon, orange and lemon peel, coriander, cardamom pods, and cassia bark. The origins of gin are a little murky, kind of how you feel after a few snorts of the stuff. It can be traced back to the late 16th century. They've been making this stuff for a long time. Calvados, produced in the heart of Normandy. Boulard Grand Soulage ha, 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 is characterized by its apple fragrance and amber color. As many as 120 different apple varieties are used to produce cider, which is then double distilled over an open flame. Aged in casks for two to five years, this Calvados yields a depth and richness with the color of golden copper. Fragrance is mainly apple with vanilla also discernible. The taste is well balanced, smooth and fruity. The aftertaste? Well, it's full of personality with a long finish. Now this is the real deal. 
Grenadine. It says right on the bottle, classic ingredients for pre-prohibition era cocktails. The grenadine you find in bars today, well, it isn't grenadine at all. It's corn syrup, glucose, fructose, water, artificial flavor, citric acid, and I love this one, sodium benzoate. Yeah, I can't get enough of that in my life, and color. This grenadine, the ingredients are organic pomegranate juice, organic cane sugar, and pomegranate concentrate. <laughs> as simple as that. Okay, we're gonna make a uh, pink lady. First, we gotta get our shaker glass happening and fill her full of ice. First thing we need is some uh, gin, and I got Tanqueray number 10. Awesome gin. Um, it's 47.3%. Ah! So if you're making a pink lady for your lady, <laughs> use this. <laughs> Ounce and a half. Then we've got our Calvados apples. Half ounce. I'm gonna spot more. That's good. Then we need our lemon juice. I've got it all ready to go here. Right in the glass. Flip that around. We'll get lots of it out. Ooh, look at that zest. It's to floating in the air. There we go. Next thing we got is an egg white. Now I know a lot of you guys don't like eggs, raw eggs. <laughs> But it's going to add a little bit of froth and wonderfulness to this drink. Egg white. And we got to make it pink, don't we? Little grenadine. Put a quarter ounce. And shake it like crazy, baby. Oh! Got to get all that egg white mixed in there. Turning into a lovely color, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. Now I've got my chilled glass here. Get that happening. And we want to double strain this so we don't get any of the egg thing in the drink, really, you know? So I'm just going to double strain. What a wonderful color, eh? That's just the way Bill liked it. And it's funny. I'm sitting there, drinking his drink. <laughs> Sweet. There we have it. And why not garnish it and make it so pink and pretty? Pretty and pink. Little flower. Oh, that's good. Maybe not my <laughs> kind of drink, but it's really refreshing. It's nice. Try one. Okay, a lot of you folk, well, you might not like raw egg in your diet. <laughs> I don't mind it. So we're going to make a version, a second version, uh, without the egg, with cream, grenadine, and gin. Basically, that's probably what you'd get in a bar if you ordered it, right? So we need ice. Lots of ice in our shaker. Okay, then we need some gin. We got our number 10. Ounce and a half. And some cream. Got in the fridge here. About the same amount, ounce and a half. That looks about right. And some grenadine. Color it up. Eep. Pop our lid on there. Shake it good, baby. Like crazy. Okay, we got our glass, our chilled glass. We're gonna put in a little martini glass. And we're gonna pour, isn't that a wonderful color? Totally different drink than the one I just made. But you'll probably enjoy this one too. 
as tradition dictates, uh, you use a maraschino cherry. And you know I don't really like them, but hey, that, it looks pretty, right? But guess what? I brought my own, <laughs> out you go, a real cherry. Yeah, yeah, baby. That is awesome. Look at that. Mm -mm. Oh, that's good. Totally different than the first version I made. Think pink, baby. That's <laughs> good. Be happy, be safe, and please drink responsibly. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, cheers. Do 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 do. Ba ba da ba do. Bow 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 bow. Ba ba da bow bow. Ba ba da ba bow. What happened? Oh, well. When you put it down, you just look really serious. Oh, well, okay. First thing you need is some gin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In 20 years, we're doing them, right? All right, we're going to make another damn drink here. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Tune in next week for another episode of Bar Talk and Cocktails. Be sure to subscribe. We're going to have a lot of fun.